hundreds and hundreds of homeowners are not getting roofs approved. I mean, what can we do? There's, uh, there's a lot of honor, a lot of honor in, in being an, uh, an adjuster. Really, there is. One of his sales guys used to work for State Farm, so I kind of see the trend that adjusters going back to working for. Do you see the trend as oh, well? Oh yeah, absolutely, I do. Why do you think is that, that's happening? Really, it comes down to can you prove it? Today we have very special guest, Jerry, the founder of Bully Bag, one of the coolest bags on the market, if not the coolest. Thank you so much for coming, sir. Thank you for having me. Had a pleasure to be here. So first thing first, uh, I want to uh, do a giveaway, finish the giveaway that we announced two weeks ago and Sergei Churbanov, interview owner of uh, Roof It Right. At the end of the interview, we ask you to comment on the video and the funniest comment will get uh, Bourbon um, by Starlight Distillery, um, collection bottle, not for my collection, but love to give it away, guys. So we have this comment here from John Purvis. I'd put that whiskey in our first aid kit for the uh, for when the guys get emotionally distressed. Lol, lol. So absolutely love that comment because you never know when you're gonna need it. So I don't drink these days, um, not much at least, but um, it can be medicine. So if you um, depressed or stressed about your business. Uh, you can put this in your kit, John. It goes to you. We're going to ship it to you. Please reply to that comment if you haven't yet. And we're going to ship this bottle to you. Thank you so much for engagement. And guys, we're going to do giveaway by Bully Back at the end of the video. Uh, we're going to ask you what we need you to do, what we need you to comment. Stay tuned to the end. Sure. The first question I have for you. Have you been bullied in school? Well, I mean, I think everybody, you know, get some sort of a bullying throughout uh, life in grade school, high school, college, or whatever, but nothing I could really uh, point out as a actual bullying, so to speak. When I was preparing for this interview, I noticed that on your website, one of the causes that you have is bullying. Usually people who identify as a problem trying to uh, contribute to the cause or help the cause, they usually have an experience or story. What is it? Why does it bother you so much, bullying? And why is it even taking place on your website? Well, you know, um, my son, as well as uh, friends of mine, uh, children, uh, been uh, dramatically impacted uh, by it that I've seen firsthand. And um, what tied to that was um, one of the um, nonprofits that we give to, Stand for the Silent. Um, their child actually committed suicide as a result of bullying. And it's just absolutely a heartbreaking story and we connected really well with them. And we wanted to make that part of our, um, part of our commitment, part of our mission to uh, help give back and to, you know, level the playing field, so to speak, um, and, uh, you know, crush out bullying, well, you know. Well, the problem is real and I salute you for that. I salute you to have a cause and uh, I did not, know about bully bag until two months ago someone just told me hey Dmitry, you, you should interview this company and look into their products but of course you're only as big as you're big on the internet and i want to compliment you on your website i mean it, it does not matter how good of the product is if i go to your website i want to know who the owner is i want to know the story i want to know the cause i want to know the reason why and your website is beautifully done it doesn't have to be expensive but it, it's straight on point i rarely compliment good websites i see the picture of you i you know today when i saw in the parking lot i know that guy uh i know your story i know you've been in the marines i know the causes so good job man good Thank job you. um telling your story so for those people who don't like to read and don't like to go to websites let's start with your story um, tell me what did you do before you got into this industry and how this all came about? Well, I suppose it all came about back in uh, probably 2008, 2007. At that time, I'd lost over, well, leading up to 2009, really. Lost a little over $3 million in real estate holdings that I had in long term, real estate entrepreneur. And um, I owned uh, the, the construction company, the real estate, the t um, lease to the title company the realty company, everything was real estate. Mm -hmm. And found myself in 2007, 2008, I have to reinvent myself. So I found myself in Midland, Texas of all places, which is um, a very not cosmopolitan town, um, selling roofs, door knocking, 
And for what a roofing company? Yeah, for a roofing company, for CMR. What a grueling process that is, you know, and, and mad respect to everyone that does that. Um, uh, and I, the more I spoke with adjusters, the more I realized I think that's going to be a better fit for me. Mm. And um, why is that? I just didn't have the close ratio, mm. you know. Um, there were guys, uh, my friend Greg, he was an outstanding roof salesperson. He could go and, you know, his close ratio was outstanding. He just wasn't a good fit for me. Hmm. Um, but the grit that it takes to do that job is amazing. Truly is a lot of, a uh, lot of respect. So you went from working for a roofing company mm -hmm. to working for an insurance company. Yeah. Yeah. How was the switch? Oh, it was, it was easy for me. Um, uh, because I, I know that the, um, the carriers have had a bit of a change since 2007, 2018, but back then, um, you know, it was very much, you know, if it's owed, pay it. So pay it. There wasn't, there was no you know, haggling, so to speak. And you, you mentioned know? it's changed later, so uh, it's not the uh, case anymore. Yeah, well, you know, it seems seems that the, the, the carriers have changed pretty dramatically, it would appear, since um, 2017. And, um, uh, you know, you got to roll with the punches. But uh, um, that's what I did. And I started my first cat was, um, my first big cat was 2011, out actually in my hometown, Kansas City. And um, um, I noticed there was nothing out there really for adjusters or for roof sales or for project managers. And um, there was one product, but I didn't like it. It was too heavy, it was too bulky. It was, just wasn't for me. And um, five years later in my spare time, I designed our prototype and took it with me to uh, Hurricane Irma. And you know, it was successful for me there. And we decided to go to market with it. And here we are today. Before we dive in and uh, manufacturing product for masses, let's talk about the traffic from roofing companies, uh, sales guys from roofing companies to adjusters and back. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of guys recently going, I know two people I met in the last three weeks because I travel all over the country and I just came from Montana. There's a state farm adjuster who works for a roofing company. Move from State Farm, I have Brent Siemens, have one of the guys, my co-host in Tennessee, he, one of his sales guys used to work for State Farm. So I kind of see the trend that adjusters going back mm -hmm. to working for. Do you see the trend as oh, well? Oh yeah, absolutely I do. Why do you think is that, that's happening? Well, um, I think it's a direct result of um, um, two things. Um, a, a different mindset of the persons that have been adjusters and mix that with social media. So you have to remember if we go back to, um, so September 2017 was when um, Hurricane Irma hit. So now you have all these um, adjusters that are on site in Florida or wherever, and they're talking about on social media, you know, they've just gone from making $10 an hour to making 500 bucks a day, you know, thousand bucks a day. And um, so now they're talking about it on social media, which creates a flood, right? So now you have a supply and demand issue. We have an oversupply of warm bodies to get the job done. And um, so as a result, the fees went down substantially with a lot of carriers. But so has, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion, the quality of the, um, the job and the inspection and, and um, the results of those adjusters. So yeah, you're, I think you're gonna see a continued um, influx of persons going back to roof sales from, from adjusting. Hmm. Um, describe to me adjuster's job. Like, so you, you said that door knock and roofing sales is mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. Is it easier job or there's, you know, <laughs> it's just different hard. Well, you know what, first off, I mean, um, you know, me cutting my teeth doing door knocking in Midland, Texas. I mean, it's 117 by 11 AM there. I mean, it's, it's it's you're a marine yeah i know but i mean that <laughs> heat is pretty serious i mean it was, it was it was pretty intense um and uh not to mention the fact that it was just you know it was big hail there was a lot of shakes there every storming company was was down there so it was, it was very highly competitive and um so um um the difference for me i think was that it was about doing the right thing and that's the code that I follow to this day. Every day I wake up, I want to do the right thing. Um, every interaction, every person. Um, and um, that's really what it came down to with the policy. So that was that was good and that was easy to follow for me as an adjuster to wake up, call my uh, 
Policy what happened in 2017? You tried to get out of it completely? Or oh, no, no. You're still in? Um, very, very lightly. I mean, Bully Bag has taken over everything um, of my time. But um, on occasion, you know, if, uh, if I'm in a, a location and uh, a firm needs a claim handle, I'll, I'll pick it up for them. Yeah. Uh, what contractors don't know generally about insurance claims other side like something that you've been on both sides mm -hmm. what would you tell contractors who are working with insurance companies right now i see a lot of frustrations i mm -hmm. see that it's two there are two different camps like on social media there's a camp of adjusters there's a camp of contractors and we don't collaborate we're not very friendly well add, yeah and add to the mix the fact that now there's a camp of inspectors Okay, which uh, the, for the uh, virtual inspection where the adjusters on um, FaceTime sitting in Georgia for, a, you know, a Minnesota claim. And we have a public adjuster. Yeah, so now we've got the public adjuster. So, yeah, to add uh, to that. So in the inspector world, I think um, contractors get frustrated because now they've got somebody that either may be highly qualified um, or not qualified at all. They don't know, but they have no control whatsoever. So um, as far as advice is concerned, is, is helping to get along. Don't mark the roof, first off. Don't mark the roof? Don't mark the roof. Why is that? I, I see a lot of guys do it. And well, it can be, it can be a, it can be a... Uh, is it a disrespect thing or is yeah, it... Yeah, it can be. Really? It can be a disrespect what thing. What else is happening? Is it illegal or is it no. like you're doing my job or, or it, why you don't recommend? Well, you have to remember, I mean, as, as roofing contractors, I mean, there's a lot of um, alphas out there that are doing the sales, you know. So now they're meeting with maybe this other personality to do that. You know, I'm going to show you everything. and Hey, how about we get along and do this together? You know, so that I would say don't mark through it. That's one thing. Okay. Um, maybe, you know, be cordial, help with the ladder, you know, you know, you get, um, just, you know, little things like that really, really go a long way. Um, yeah, I mean, you're for, I mean, you're out there to sell the job, you know, look the part, be professional and, um, you know, be kind, you know, it works. Why so many adjusters are pissed when we contractors try to film them, document yeah. what they're doing, what they're saying, yeah. like they want to say it. They claim to be professional, but the moment we do the camera or film something, it's over. Like I have it happen to me where adjuster asked me, are you recording me? Well, I'm recording what you're saying, what you're explaining. It's like, this inspection is over. Mm -hmm. Like why? You're not standing behind your words. I, I understand it's controversial, but at the same time, you know, like I wouldn't have a problem you recording me if I say, hey, I'm going to fix this roof for 12.5 or whatever. Like I'm sure I'm an expert on the field. I'm educating you. Why not record me? Why would I be against it? Well, that that may not be um, an issue that the independent, the actual um, adjuster may have a challenge with. That may be, you know, a higher echelon, you know. Um, so like a larger carrier, for example, they may say if you go out there and they start recording you just in the inspection and we'll sound out a special team. Special team. I don't know. I'm not, uh, that's, uh, that's beyond my pay grade, so to speak. Do you know what I mean? Sure. I don't know what that, why that is, but what? it doesn't really bother me. I mean, I mean, I've always had a good rapport with just about every contractor that I've met. And, um, I mean, I understand their side. I, they have to understand mine as far as, uh, if I'm handling the adjustment and, um, you know, let's do the right thing. It's really what it comes down to. As a media company, I always have people reaching out to me with the stories. And um, there, as of late, my phone has been blown up with the state farm denials, like Chicago area, like Midwest. Uh, pretty much, I can say the trend is that insurance company is toughest than ever. Nobody understands why. Like this year is just super crazy. Do you see that? And how can you explain it? I can't. So that's so why something happened that's why I stopped where just that's why I, I stopped adjusting for that company back in 2017 as a result of those changes that came down what, what kind of changes just were tighter about? just tighter just not wanting to seem it would appear that some carriers don't want to pay you know what they owe um, uh, the so restrictions do they, do they argue with their own adjusters like yeah oh yeah that's what I hear I'm, I mean I'm not in the loop anymore sure. in that particular company but um, I mean, I just did get off the phone with a friend of mine that is, and I have another a marine buddy of mine. He is as well, and uh, yeah, the 
the attitude is is to a mass exodus away from mm. from that from that carrier. So it's hard because the so it's changes hard. are too 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 strict. They're too much. You know, so it's, too it's hard to be a good guy on on the on that field with, now. Yeah, with a with a, a set of rules that seem you know unfair. But why is that? Like when you look at the money if you follow money right you see the premiums are i mean the company now does over 100 billion dollars you know that's what it's worth i mean it's so, not like their their premiums are going down exactly right so, so they collect more to pay less yeah, i know it so what what's what gives greed that's well um i think sometimes whenever you take uh, the cfo and they become the ceo i think you're gonna have some uh, pretty uh um, is that what happened that's what happened yeah like 17. Um, you're going to have some purse strings tighten pretty over, over tight. And I think you get a, an overall um, unjust feeling for both the, the contractor, the, the adjuster, as well as the policyholder, you know, especially the policyholder. Let's, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, um, it's not about contractor and us being profitable. It's about what, right what exactly yeah. you, you go, you look at the homeowners, like you should get paid. You have a right. you know, claim and it's hard. To I mean, we have to, we don't promise them, but we see what we see. When we see the damage, we see the damage, like that's the claim. And later we look bad when insurance denies it. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, and I think that's why you've had such a, a rise in PAs too, mm -hmm. you know? Um, when I first got in the business, um, that was my intention was to be a PA. And um, as I learned through the years of being an IA, um, there's there's quite a lot of uh, there's uh, there's a lot of honor a lot of honor in, in being an, uh, an adjuster really there is it's you know there's a lot of responsibility and some carriers may give you the authority to bind and some don't okay so for authority to bind and that may b go back to what we were asking earlier how come we can I, when I start recording you know Joe Schmuck and tell the adjuster he says it's it's over right. Well, he may or may not have the authority to bind. And if he's got the authority to bind, well, if he says something incorrect, you can bind it to it, mm -hmm. right? But if he doesn't have the authority to bind, well, now he's just in a pickle. Absolutely. You know? What's your take on the PAs now? Like, does industry need PAs? Like, do we have too many? We don't have enough. Are there good guys, bad guys? You recommend contractors to work with the PAs? It's kind of the area where I think a lot of contractors either scared or afraid to talk to them or like look at them as third party we don't need yet, but sometimes you have to have them. Right. What's your take on PAs? Well, I am a PA. So you are a PA. Yeah, okay. I'm in the uh, state of Missouri right now and spending that license out. But um, my take is, is that it's a, you know, it's a noble profession. Um, you know, there are certain markets, uh, Chicago is a big one where the PAs work directly with the contractor as it can be part of the company, I believe. Don't hold me on yeah, the, the legalities. That's the only, that's the only that, state. Something yeah. like that, yeah. And I understand why, because the contractors want to get paid, you know. Um, but I think there's going to be a rise in that the more that you continue, the carriers continue to send out um, um, ill-prepared persons, where it's a, the inspector mentality. Um, so, for example, I was actually speaking about uh, this with my buddy Terry just the other day. Well, how can that be, Terry, if, if I'm an inspector and I go out on the roof and, I, and I'm taking a picture of it and I got Sarah back home that's the adjuster and we're looking at hail damage and we're feeling it. Is the mat broke? Is the mat not broke? So on and so forth. Sarah can't tell. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a, it becomes a, a contentious point. I think uh, there's going to be a rise of public adjusters as a result to to set that pendulum more straight, you know, because it just seems it's just gone way too far. And sometimes it's misleading. It's a strategy. I remember the adjuster who yelled at me that, are you filming me? Uh, like it was a metal church, a roof, and we're standing on it. And so he, he does the square, like whatever, they, he chucks a little piece and w with the two dents in it, like we see it, like he actually said, well, I only see two. And he said it, look, I have him on camera, but then he wrote zero and he take a picture and I ask him, where are you going? Like, you just said there's a dent and now you put zero. He's like, I'm, uh, so he verbally acknowledged there's a dent he we looked at it he said there's a dent i can see it and i'm going to send it to desk adjuster to make a decision uh, and i asked him 
Well, you just wrote zero next to that square test on the metal roof. We discussed it. You verbally agreed that there's dent, but you're not putting it in writing and your picture is not going to say. So what do you think desk adjuster is going to say? Yeah, they're just going to kill Well, me. of course. And, uh, and, and meanwhile, I'm filming just with my phone. And he's like, are you filming me? Of course I am. You're lying to my face here. And we have two letters set up. So he went down, grabbed his, um, <laughs> I'm happy that I have mine set up. Otherwise, we would not have a letter. And he left and he started filming me as he's leaving. And he's like, what's your name? <laughs> like, what? Like, it's a church. It's a public. And I actually was going to that church. So I knew pastor. I'm like, come on, man. Like, Did you get a job out eventually? Um, yes. Good. Not that building, other two buildings. What happened is we replaced the roof two years prior and it was shot. But there was one uh, roof that we not, did not replace that still got dented and he would not buy it. So they ended up paying like 150K for other two buildings, but not for that one. They gave us something. It was very hard. Uh, Church Mutual, I think this company, very, very hard to to fight. In the beginning, they would deny everything. But because I was filming, because it was escalated, now we're talk I throw a video on YouTube. <laughs> it kind of escalated the situation, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't care. Like, yeah. if you're so unethical, I'm going to roast you. I'll do the press release about it. I'll make you famous for shady practice. Like, I don't care. Like, you, you can do it if church mutuals can do it to churches, because pastors are nice. You know, church people, they don't like conflict, you know, like, and it's not like I like conflict, but I also don't like to be bullied. Right. I don't like to be like, okay, we're going to pay you premiums every year. And one time when we're going to need a claim, when, like you telling me that this church deserves hail dented roof for the rest of life. I mean, I'm a contractor. When I drive through town, I see the dance. Like that church will be <laughs> having door knockers coming for the next 10 years, try to open the claim saying, how come you did not replace it? Well, we tried, but they didn't find the damage, right? It's stupid. Yeah. With those metal roofs, there's, you know, there's the exclusion too, you know, is it just aesthetic damage or has it uh, broken the seal in some kind of way? In that case there, I, I think Church Mutual is a, a really good carrier from what I understand. I've never worked for them. Sure. But I've heard they, they do. Well, like, like I said, my experience was just like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, when you tell me there's a damage, when you write it and then you put zero and you send it to a desk adjuster saying they're going to make a decision, just like you said, it's that person who cannot touch, cannot feel, they're not there. Right. You know, like, I mean, if it's an absolutely shot, like Google worth picture of hail damage, like you can see the spots, of course. But I never understood logic of, like all state, you know, 16 hits per square. So you have 50 and it's not enough because you're missing one. I mean, come on, give me a break here. So can you give me one more advice to contractors who works with adjusters in this day and time? As insurance companies become tougher and change their practices and argue more, what can contractor do? Because when one person escalates, right, and becomes more aggressive. It's very hard for other person to keep being nice. And I see this tension, the temperature in the industry is rising. I see more and more um, contractors on the rise. By the way, uh, State Farm headquarters is right here, Bloomington, Illinois, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling guys, let's just take one of those signs and freaking go rally in front of it for a couple of days. Why not? I mean, what's going to change? Like they have billions to brainstorm, to brainwash the public, right? So they tell everybody like, I, I just saw this morning um, magnet on contractors truck. State Farm is not good neighbor. I was cracking up. Like wow. Italy, in the limit. like it's getting there. It's getting there, huh? It's getting there. I mean, wow. and I have a contractors reaching out and they're like, Dimitri, can you make a video? Can you make it public? And I've tried. I mean, I brought guys like John Howard Helen, we talk about it, but I feel like we have to rise up and just go in and say, you know what, enough is enough. Not only for ourselves, but for people. Like in Chicago right now, I can find 100 contractors who's dealing with denials that, you know, every single day. That's hundreds and hundreds of homeowners are not getting roofs approved. I mean, what can we do? What would you say, like, 
I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to fight that. That's a David and Goliath kind of fight. You know what I mean? It's, it's very big. It's, I think it's just something that we have to just keep pushing uh, for the carriers to do the right thing. Um, pay what's owed. And that's really what it comes down to. Is it in the policy? I would say that that's, um, so I teach a class, College Contractors Mosaic through uh, National Justice Career Academy. Um, and uh, it's called uh, Contracts Mosaic is about getting along and being more profitable um, during the inspection process. And really it comes down to, um, you know, those, those words. Can you prove it? That's really what it comes down to. So when I said earlier, I said, don't mark up the roof, I would say minimally mark up the roof, okay? Put a tick mark, like a little dash, one little dash here, there. Okay, now you're extending respect to the adjuster to do their job. That's their job to determine, right? Right, so, and now you're saying, but you're saying, here, let me help you, but, right? But what's happening? If you say, can you prove it? And, that's, and, you, and, and that really comes down to it because if it's in the policy and it's owed and there's gray area there, well, now it comes down to those words. Can you prove it? But the problem is, back in the day, it, it could be earning respect of that adjuster. Now, adjuster and contractors agreeing on damage. Adjuster have interest of contractor and homeowner, but insurance company denies both. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's that's, that's, go, that's going on. Yeah, and I don't know what to do about that. I mean, maybe that's where um, uh, what is it? Uh, What's your take APPI? on the appraisals? Um, I mean, I'm an umpire, so um, I'm all for ADR, you know, um, alternative dispute resolution. I think it's um, when it when it's warranted, it's warranted, you know, um, you know, they they tend to, you know, meet in the middle. And, you know, it's like a great compromise is, you know, being equal, where both parties are equally dissatisfied, hmm. you know. So um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of appraisals and. Um, I mean, I, I do umpire work on occasion as well. And it's uh, usually a good process. You um, know. Let's talk about your products here. Sure. So how did you come up with the first idea? Just guide me through history of Bullyback, like from, f from idea to production to become a brand brand, recognized brand in the industry. Well, so... Um, what was your first product here? So that would, well, this is the G2, but that would be the, um, the Ultra Pouch here. And um, so I was on a Hailcat in 2016 and it was like September right before Hurricane Matthew. And um, I was laying in bed, it's like 11 o'clock at night. I've been working on the design. So, oh, needs a zipper. So I got out of bed and continued sketching it and so on and so on. And that's what really brought it all together. So this is the um, Bullet Bag Ultra Pouch. This is the G2 um, Ultra Pouch, which is uh, Marine Talk for intelligence um this is 15 chambers in all the original the uh, the original gen one had 12 so we added three more on the inside here which is great you can configure it however you want um, i put chalk in here just to show it off but really i put my moisture meter probably right here you know i'll put my camera out here maybe i'll put some ppe here put my chalk here my 100 foot tape measure here we actually loaded this thing down we took a huge like belt system and uh, open pockets, you know, and put a, a whole, all the gear that we could possibly need, put everything in here and it was much, much more controlled and much, um, and actually lighter. Um, so going around the perimeter here, you've got a hidden slot here for like a sidebar and shingle gauge up front. I put my like a laser measure right and here. I you make this four. sidebar yourself. Yeah, yeah. So the sidebar, the sidebar. Can you buy it on Amazon or is it all through your website? No, you can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it at uh, Beacon Supply. You can buy it at SRS. Um, uh, you buy it on the website, bullybag.com. Uh, sidebar's great. It's, our, it's actually um, a patented um, pry bar, which is uh, outstanding. We, we got the full utility patent on that. Um, and then this one is loaded up with um, retainers too. So what I do with mine, usually I have a number one s beaner on here, but whenever I'm on the roof and I'm, I'm up there, I typically drop my camera and it's going to go not too terrible far at least, okay? It may skid or something like that. So I load mine with the retainers. Um, and it all comes, you know, all the pouches on the outside, the three on, on the outside have elastic bands, which is great because you want to put something in there, but you want it to be controlled, you know? So if you got to put your phone in there or whatever you're going to do um, with oversized flaps, because during beta, every day from two to four, 
during the winter in Florida, it rains. So we wanted to make sure that it was able to be secured or you can just take them and you can tuck them in like I did on the front. Mm -hmm. So um, I use the outer chamber for my um, camera. You got um, four large pin screwdriver holsters here and your um, business card holster because you know you left those in the truck. You tape measure clip and this one all comes on a paddle. Love it. So made of 1680 ballistic nylon. Um, the idea behind the name, which was kind of, you know, a little bit, um, it was difficult, you know, well, I mean, Allen Tool Company's been taken for about a hundred years now, so I couldn't go with that, right? Um, and uh, we wanted to uh, use uh, the Bulldog as part of our, uh, our branding. And so we uh, bought the name bullybag.com and uh, moved forward with it. Um, officially, that was in 16 and um, officially, um, uh, incorporated in um, 2018. So we just passed a little over three years now. Love it. And I really like the branding piece. So you can put any logo here, like you can yeah. put your company. I think this is genius because if you brand it, it looks like it's yours, like your company owns it. I absolutely love it. I love the card. I mean, yeah, we've done that. Design. We've done that for a lot of uh, contractors and they absolutely love that branding piece there. Yeah. Wow. How many have you sold so far? Uh, the G2, um, probably, well, it just came out <laughs> about a month ago. Oh, wow. Um, so we've sold about 500 of the G2, but of the G1, we've sold close to 4,000 in the past uh, three years. Yeah. So. So you sell them just the bag itself or do you have version where it's all loaded? Oh no, so for um, for our um, contractors, for our you know project managers, for the roof sales, the person that owns the roofing company and he's got a new sales team coming on or you know two, three additions, we make what's called the starter pack and that's something that we're also putting on the Atlas um, uh, roofing site as well, uh, which is great because that's your, that's your bully bag ultra pouch, your two retainers, it's your sidebar, it's your, uh, 25 foot uh, tape measure right there. It's your AccuLine flipboard. It's your S beaner. It's your, um, and all comes contained in one large bag. So it's 10 items all in one. So you literally pull it out of the box, throw it to whoever and say, no, get love, busy. Love it. So let's give a few of them away. Uh, what would you like our audience to comment? What's valuable to you? Do you want to get some feedback to improve it? Or what do you want them to comment that's valuable to you that you would ship them uh, a bull bag. In um, you know what? Um, I mean, we we always we're always open to cr uh, criticism and to um, hopefully as constructive as possible. Um, <laughs> if we're missing something, then then please let us know. What we did understand is that we 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 actually took our tape strap. We were giving those away to win the storm, and it was it was interesting. My lady, she said, "Why don't you just give away the tape strap?" And I said, "You think so?" I said, you know, that would work pretty good. And um, what we did with the tape strap is we took it and we connected it um, to the two D-rings. One D-ring here, one D-ring here. And I could put my hatchet there if I had to make a repair as a project manager, just go up there, just kind of fix one little thing and get back down. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as um, um, giving away is concerned, um, I don't know, maybe a, maybe a raving fan. How about that? You know, um, what, what they love about it. Um, or of whoever's got the most unique um, uh, suggestion, yeah, sure. recommendation. For so guys, change. number one, either share your feedback if you already known Bully Bag. So uh, maybe let's do one raving fan and one best recommendation. So we'll, we'll give two Bully Bags. Uh, Jared here will pick two winners. One is a raving fan. Just share your feedback with people, how you use it, if you love it, what you like about it. And um, if you considering or maybe you own it, but you wanna uh, improve it, comment below your recommendation. What else would you like this thing to have? And Jared will pick two winners and send uh, another two bags to you guys. What else do you have here? Um, so uh, of course- uh, Let's talk about this. This, talk about this, this is impressive. I've seen it earlier. Show me and like, it's a very cool tape measure. So that's our um, that's our adjust grip tape measure, 25 foot. That's one I like. It's got an adjustable um, orbital, orbital head on it. It's a double sided. The back side's got training wheels for somebody that doesn't understand their eights. So that's a nice training wheel. Uh, this is a um, kind of a rounded edge table that we're on here. Um, most uh, tape measures aren't going to hold that. So we'll take that and it'll, it'll uh, attach itself to 
a uh, What's the around, standout obviously. length on this one? It's about eight feet. It's not the greatest standout because you got a little bit of a heavier head here, sure. um, but it's good enough. Um, the challenge that we always came across is you're measuring those gutters. You're measuring that rake and you get about eight feet or worse yet with the gutters, you get five and it pops off every time. And I always thought, well, maybe it's just me. I go, I'm going to go buy another one. Okay. And another one. And so, um, we, uh, we used the adjuster grip and it solved that, that whole problem. Um, you know, put it on the rake where the shingles start to furl. Can't tell how many to times it. this came off. Like, I mean, I, I've been working in the cabin shop, carpentry, just like, it's pretty long. Where the tip, is, tip yeah. comes off. Yeah, that one's got four rivets in it. Um, so uh, it's a, and it's also magnetic. You know, it's also got a magnetic tip on it. Sure. So that's that's helpful as well. Right. So, so what else you have? What is this thing? Side scrap bandit. Yeah. This is for paperwork folders. Yeah. This is uh, this is um for your um, your laptop for your um. This is a very this is a hyper versatile item here. Okay, and first off, it can be attached to um, a belt system or not. Okay, so it um, comes with a removable um, pad here to keep the soft hook and loop uh, um, clean. If you want to wear it as a, as a messenger style, you can do that. So it's, it's a man's purse. Yeah, right, right. That's a man's tech, tech, uh, tech, uh, tech carrier here. So you've got, uh, you can insert from above. So you've got your iPad, you want to do that. You can close off both ends. And that's really, really handy because if you only want to be inserting from the top, maybe that's what you want to do. Or if you're only inserting from the left or only from the right, you might want to permanently close off that end. So this is really great. These come apart like a sandwich. And then this comes back together and makes, makes a closed box. So that's, that's great. Or if you want to leave both ends open, you can do that. And it's got a clasp on each end to keep your gear from falling out. Uh, what's great about this as well is the uh, material that's on the inside. It's just made of cargo netting, which is good because we didn't want we don't want to suffocate the item. If it's clipboard, that's not not a big deal. But if it's an iPad or something of that nature, we want to let it breathe a little bit. Um, we've got an outer chamber here, great for your documents. Um, we've got a zipper here. This is actually made for putting the pad in if you didn't want it there, but you can use it for whatever you want. And then here, if you, that, that's, a, that's a chalk or whatever it is you want to do. This works really great in conjunction with the, um, the ultra pouch here and goes on the other side or you can put it as part of the belt. Yeah. I really like this little piece here. V very smart. Um, it's high speed, low drag. Did you come up with it or where is this idea coming that, from? That came from um, Beta in um, Irma. Remember, we, we tested this for about two years. It was like a year and 10 months, something like that, um, before we went to uh, market with it. And that came about in Irma. Uh, we were, at that point, this we were using a small favorite, clip. Favorite feature. Yeah, just put it on, try it out. I will. Yeah. Um, we uh, The small clip that we were using back in Irma just wasn't enough, just didn't do it. Um, it just needed more control and um, it worked out fantastic. Love yeah. it. And what do we have here? Uh, so that's our Alpha Dog tool pack. This is uh, uh, 48 chambers in all. This is uh, outstanding for your um, um, your uh, roof repair techs. You know, maybe you want a place to put your, your co hard. coring samples, your you know, what have you. But the interesting thing is you always get on the roof and it seems like you just, you forgot your screws, you forgot your, you know, you need a few more nails or whatever. Um, so this is a carry all for that right there. Um, so you've got a large compartment here for your tools up front. You've got two tape measure clips on the outside. And then uh, of course you've got a tech pouch back here. If you're gonna carry your laptop or your iPad or whatever. It's very heavy duty for mm -hmm. sure. Yep, yeah. Your uh, bag identifier, um, your notes, um, your uh, extension cord pouch or your helmet pouch. So th this is more for like repairs for... I see. It's more of the, the installer, uh, the repair person, um, or, or possibly even, uh, you know, if you're doing so uh, commercial or, like yeah, you need a place for your core kit your screwdrivers, uh, you know, whenever you're going to need those and you don't have to, but that's your primary job. Your primary job isn't sure. as an installer, so you can fit everything in that. Love yeah. it. 
What is this thing? Just explain it to me. <laughs> so this is our AccuLine um, uh, flipboard. This is a, a double clip clipboard. On one side, it's got SMAX reference. This is the item DC302. Um, it's great for training, great for remembering, you know. And so in the adjuster world, talk off is what we use on all of our notes. You'll see that along the right-hand side usually. It's type, age, layers, condition, overhang, and pitch. So this is for, um, for those that, es this is our estimator's reference is what it is. And then on the, the back side is AccuLine straight line without a uh, ruler. This is, uh, we own the brand AccuLine. Uh, AccuLine is the originators of this straight line without a ruler system in 1966. You can see it's got micro etched on this side. If I had some paper, I'd do an example for you, but I don't have any right now. So, um, so yeah, these are great. These are available um, on the website as well. And also part of the starter pack and a lot of different um, things that we um, provide these for to make people more successful. Yeah. Love it. Very cool. All right, guys. Um, we actually just partner up with the uh, bully bag. If you guys use link below in description, you get 5% off of any orders. Thank you for that. Just for our fans. That's the only affiliation we have. Uh, it's not sponsored content. I just wanted to, to introduce Jared to our audience. He will be coming to Roofing Process Conference later this year. You can meet him and say thank you for awesome bags and inventions. I love seeing products that are well designed and Thank you for what you do for the industry, you sir. Yeah, brother. Thank you.